Yo, my name is Vosk. I'm a crypto freaking baby. And I wanted to share my plans for building a dedicated hard drive mining shed, or simply put, a DIY data center. Got a pretty funny comment. What is this? Animal Crossing? <laughs> kind of. So I've talked about this before in another video, but there's been some new developments, and uh, above all, it's really time for me to sync this order. So I really want, if you don't mind, to conceptualize this with me. So the quick recap is that I'm converting an Amish shed into a data center. And uh, they're actually pretty cool. They're pretty much gonna configure it just like how I want it. And it's almost gonna actually be plug and play by the time I get it, uh, which I'll explain more about that as we go. Uh, but I have an existing shed that I have other plans for from air-cooled mining as well as immersion mining with ASIC miners and possibly some other gear in there. Uh, but hard drive mining just doesn't really fit the same bill. It's low power, it's low noise, it's low heat, and it's something I can actually very easily cool, right? So I'm looking at deploying a smaller shed with a couple windows to get some natural light in there, but not too much. Uh, my initial plan is simply this, right? So I'm looking at setting up two racks. They're two feet deep, four feet wide. And from there, I'll have a mini split on both sides. Only plan to be running one, but to just have a straight up second unit as a backup so I can never get hit with downtime because there'll be no airflow in here. So if this goes down in the dead heat of summer, the whole farm's offline. I'd rather, you know, invest another thousand dollars and have a backup mini split AC unit ready to go because I'm very, very serious about this. All right, so uh, just deployed another hard drive miner, specifically another Evergreen miner, and it's going to be another one of their starter kit pros. Uh, so it's 157.8 terabytes. And uh, this one's still kind of ramping up, getting started, but you can see my shares are going up, uh, which is really cool and exciting. All of my estimated earnings and everything are still based off of two miners, right? So there's this coin called Chia. Okay, well, gonna get a Chia pet. Actually, they, they show up as uh, number one there after Healthline. Is, is that an ad? That's pretty cool. That's a big achievement. I guess nobody cares about Chia pets anymore. She is supposed to be a layer one, better blockchain, scaling, green, all that stuff. It's a platform, which is cool. Uh, honestly, I don't really like the branding that they have, uh, but they're doing a lot of cool things. When you're mining Chia, they call it farming, right? Uh, there's NFTs on chain, there's tokens on chain, there's all kinds of stuff on chain. One thing I really like about the farming side, okay, is when you hit a block, it's built into the protocol, you get chia sent directly to your address like that is so cool never touches the pool like that is just a good design to put it simply this chain simple effective it works um and i'm kind of just getting bullish on it some people pull it up on coin gecko or coin market cap and they're like boss you're, you're an idiot i'm like what why now why am i an idiot they're like the time is coming gone for that. It's down 98% from its all time high. I'm like, dude, that's exciting. Yes, nice. Like, I'm glad it's down 98% from its all time high. It's only th up 30% from its all time low an entire year ago. They're looking to go public, right? Raise money. They're not investing in marketing. It's only a $250 million market cap coin, ranked 140, doing $2 million in trading volume. Uh, they're still missing some major exchange listings, right? You're like, well, are they on Coinbase? No. Are they on Binance? No. Best place to grab this, if you're US citizens, probably gonna be Qcoin. There's some other options in here as well. Uh, personally, I try to mine all of my Chia. Uh, if I'm not mining it, then I am grabbing it from uh, Qcoin. Uh, there is also the crypto.com exchange but wow is that volume low so anyway I, I could go on but but that's the gist of it right uh you can plot your own hard drive and build your own chia miners uh if you'd like to do so absolutely what's cool about the evergreen miners and like this isn't a sponsored video they didn't pay me to say this right um they have sponsored some gear previously 
just to be clear, right? And I'm working on bringing a Voscoin edition to market uh, with them. What got me interested in this is the fact that I wanted to mine Chia, but I didn't really feel like learning Chia mining and dealing with the hard drives and all this setup stuff, whatever, right? So we go to the Starter Kit Pro. It's not cheap. It's basically three grand. And the $2,800 version is actually sold out. So you got to get the 100 ter 180 terabyte version. That's fine. It's more drives, but it's a little more money. Um, you can buy these other ones, right? So they have a starter kit for 300 bucks. Grab it if you want. But this is a proof of concept, right? This isn't some kind of cash cow. And even if Chia goes ballistic, this thing it really isn't going to be all that interesting. Uh, you're going to have to drop three grand to get a, a serious miner for this. The starter kit plus is a good happy median, right? At $1,300. And they say you can earn about one Chia per month with it on about only consuming 30 watts, right? So again, this is super low power consumption. But my point is you can save some money by inputting the code VOSCOIN today. It may not work on your car insurance, but it does work on your Chia buys. Okay, that was lame, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm not kidding, but it's, it was a shameless plug. But to bring it back to the focus on the mission here, seriously, it's these miners that were fun, engaging, and got me back into hard drive mining. I have a hard drive mined seriously since Burst Coin, um, and that was a rocky road, especially when I was a noob uh, back then. So I'll talk about the estimated breakdown, right? Uh, I'll come to this in a second. But basically, if you round up, a starter kit pro is using about 100 watts. So even after deploying 12 kits, and let's say I just use straight evergreen miners, I mean 12 kits. That's a lot of money. To be very specific, if we went with the bigger kit, which I don't have any of those, all of mine are the 160 terabyte versions, but 3,000 times 12 is 36 grand. Wow, that's an expensive shit. Pretty easy math. But my point here specifically, right, is 1,200 watts at 120 voltage. It consumes 10 amps. I could deploy a seriously large amount of hard drive with only a 100 amp sub panel. So if I use six pro kits, with, which all have 10 hard drives each, and I use the 18 terabyte version, which I don't have, then I would deploy one petabyte onto uh, mining or farming Chia, which that's my first goal here is to get up there. Uh, right now I'm up to almost half a petabyte because I have three kits. But to bring it back to the shed and the infrastructure bill and all that stuff, right? You start to look at the shed, $2,500, some gravel to put under it, get that all situated, 200 bucks in racks, wiring it up for 1,500, trench and ethernet for 500 bucks, two mini splits, two grand, installing that up, estimating high at one grand, insulate and seal, drywall right, maybe a grand, air filter, 100 bucks, miscellaneous parts, 250, and I end up with about 10 grand in infrastructure, parts and labor to deploy almost like a plug and play hard drive, mining shed, or my DIY data center. I have an invoice from the company I'm working with. And if I stick with the eight by 10 sizing, the cost is almost exactly, and I'm not just doing this to pat myself on the back, but it's almost exactly $2,500. Insulating the walls, ceiling, and floor is gonna cost me about $1,000 with them. So we're talking materials, we're talking labor, the floor is going to be insulated with double bubble and two inch styrofoam. They'll also apply finish on the wall, which would be Western red cedar paneling and trim. They have an electrician, which isn't my normal one, but by using him, he can come in and do all the electrical work and then they can finish up the paneling on the inside and I get really a finished product, which is going to be pretty cool to be able to get it to market that quickly, right? Uh, so that is budgeted at $1,550 two dollars bringing my total on the shed deployment here to seven thousand dollars when it comes to the electric i sent him this mock-up uh, but he sent me over this and uh, it's pretty much the same thing uh including him running uh light bars in the shed thinking about it though i'm wondering if i should run three light bars and run them perpendicular to the shelves they're gonna be running the same orientation these light bars currently are. You can see, this was my initial plans for the uh, light bars to run three uh, side to side like that. He's also missing the fact that the door swings inward, so I do not have hinges on the door on the outside, adding a layer of security here for me. Uh, so I do want the door to swing inwards this way. 
Uh, so the switch needs to be moved to this side. When you look closer at the electric diagram, you can see that I have outlets here, a very large amount of outlets, because kind of, why not, right? Now or never. I think there's also a miss in his electric diagram where I need dedicated 30 amp outlets, right, to put up a PDU to run all of these miners off of, uh, because I do want to be running all of my gear off of 240 voltage as opposed to 120 voltage. To put it simply, right, slightly more efficient, but even more so, I'm using half the amps. So if I consume half the amps, I can deploy literally twice as much gear in the same footprint. There will be a higher upfront cost for me because I'll need at least, you know, at some point to have PDUs as opposed to say just plugging into a bunch of outlets or whatever. But when you really think about my electrical consumption here and you look at my design, I am likely to run out of, one, I'm going to run out of money, okay, before anything else when it comes to all this hard drive mining gear deployment. Then I'm going to run out of space really before I run out of electricity. Grabbing some of the comments off the last video I posted, it was cool to read some of these. Christopher Reeves was like, you're not a lunatic. Chi is gonna be huge. Will be huge, he said. We'll see, but I'm quite literally banking on it at this rate, uh, proceeding with this plan. Dan B brings up a very interesting point and something I need to kind of iron out the details of how I wanna weave this into the plan. And that's going to be a server rack deployment, right? And Evergreen has enterprise options on these. You can also DIY it, right? You've maybe seen like Linus Tech Tips and his server room and all his hard drives, uh, you know, and the two among many others. Uh, something like that. If you remember way back when we went to Crazy Dane's house, he had some really cool server rack deployments. Uh, so you think about it, right? Two full racks would be a crazy amount of hard drives. 1,200 20 terabyte drives, 48 by 42, by 79, would be 24,000 TB or 24 PBs. So at that point, you're gonna need a concrete pad to handle the weight. Power would be really only 8,000 watts. That seems like a lot until you get into ASIC mining. He has a 4U DIY server case. He has 30 18 terabyte hard drives, which is 540 terabytes with 4,950 plots with Harvester pulling only 217 watts at the wall. He's looking to scale up to a full 42U server rack with 300 or so hard drives. One day, if I can get a good price on hard drives. Oh, I feel that. They're expensive. I think my biggest gripe with this right now is when you really start to think about server racks and how they just don't really fit what I'm doing. You start to talk about that density, you do have serious weight and it may exceed the wood floor that I'm gonna be dealing with here, right? In this shed, it's spec to be an insulated plywood floor on four by four runners. It's not, you know, suited to hold that kind of weight. But if I bring in concrete, that ups the cost. And then it's more expensive to build on concrete as opposed to, you know, just have a shed they make at their factory, they bring it over and they drop it off. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> Alexa's is going to kill me, but uh, she stuck with me, right? Because she said yes the other day. That was fun. That was crazy. Uh, but yeah, she might kill me. I think it makes more sense to just kind of run and gun with this setup I'm thinking about, keep the cost lower. And if I ever do pursue this in that volume where I do need that kind of setup, why not build another building? True! Oh, she does, but she doesn't want to hear that. Oh, man. <laughs> so um, that's kind of where I'm at. When, when I kind of just even sit here and think about it and talk it through with you, I'm wondering, like, why constrict myself on the space? The bigger area I have, obviously, there's going to be some more cost, but it's not the biggest thing in, in the, you know, grand scheme of this. I am putting at least 100 hard drives in this shed by the end of the year, right? My goal is more like 200 if I can get there. That's a lot. And if we take them at like the pre-plotted, ready to deploy, I mean, that, that, that's that's a decent chunk of change. I wonder, like, I, I don't want to be constricted in there or 
even worst case run out of space looking at the electrical consumption pulling 100 amps like i'm gonna have plenty of juice in there for what i'm doing but now i'm thinking maybe i'll even just bump it two feet and that'll be a minimal cost bump but give me a fair amount of additional square footage to work with and just have some more wiggle room uh but when i look at my measurements here i don't know when i look at my original drawing I, maybe i just didn't really run this right kind of to begin with if, if i've got two by four shelves so i'm dealing with eight feet but i have them kind of spaced out uh, they need to be right next to each other and that only gives me one foot on each side uh so that's that's not going to be enough space you know at all really thinking this through i'm like why not have three racks i don't know i always make things bigger Ugh. three racks right so i need 12 feet and i can just put them side by side by side and then i mean at 12 feet I, I want at least two feet on each side uh so that you know puts me to 16 feet wide uh, i'm gonna have to make this larger and it's still not giving me any kind of i don't want to say throwaway space but like flexible space uh versatile i don't know any kind of word there okay so i need to kind of hit the drawing board and i don't want to just kind of talk in circles here um but i'm all ears it's i'm really trying to do this once do this right and not waste money redoing things and just hit the ground running so uh, with that said that's all i got today i uh, hope you stick around subscribe but for no other reason than our cpo our chief planning officer here at the boss coin youtube channel my background doesn't look right it looks like muted it's like it's like trying to like take it out with like the green screen effect or something it's some, some, something's wrong so i'm gonna head out like spongebob See you on the next one.